So this is the very generous with his time, Robert Halpern. Yes. <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you run the newspaper, but if you had to be remembered for something, it would be for oh. your kids. Uh, one, of, one of whom I've met. Yeah, I, I love my kids, and I, they, they've turned out really well. And if I could, uh, you know, what I, what I want to say, that it would be, I just assume on my tombstone say, I was the father of Miriam, Alberto, and Diego, and the husband of Rosario. Well, because they're the strength of the operation. <laughs> well, that, that's really sweet. I, I know uh, Rosario, not that well. I think I know Alberto pretty well. Um, the other two, I don't know. Do they live in town? Our daughter lives in Spain. Where in Spain? Uh, Girona, mm -hmm. in the region of Catalonia, near Barcelona. Uh -huh. I mean, that's a whole other story. That she, grew, she grew up in Marfa? Yeah, then? yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Marfa High School, class of 2000, I think. Uh -huh. And she went off to school, and her junior year abroad, she met a fellow in Barcelona, and they've been married now for six or eight years. Wow. Has he, he been here? No, he's never been to the United States. He can't fly. He's got the flyophobia. Flyophobia. And who was the other one? Uh, uh, Diego is going to American University in Washington D.C. right now. Oh, I lived right. I grew up right around there. I grew up in D.C. I've heard that. Yeah. It, I love the, the city. It gets a bad rap because it's the seat of government, but yeah. it's a pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a pretty cool culture. It's got everything: opera, uh, art. It's, Music, it's, it's blues. surprisingly, well, I haven't been there in a long time, but when I was a kid, it, w it was surprisingly southern. You know, it's supposed to be like sure. the, the home of the Yankees and all. Well, it's not the home of the Yankees, but, you know, the Yankee mentality. We love it. I mean, you know, the seat of the, seat of the government kind of gives it a bad rap now, that, uh, depending yeah. on what, what administration, it's not so bad now right. for, for me. <laughs> uh -huh. But all the museums and, mm -hmm. and, you know, the government free museums, Air and Space Museum. All so the, how old is he? Yeah. Let's see, 19. Oh, okay. Well, let's. Uh, why are you here? How did you? you your family's from here. My, how far did I go back? My mother came to Alpine as a Jewish German. Well, uh, my how do I say? My mother came to Alpine in the er, in, in the early nineteen in about the night in the teens, the nineteen something. Man, you go back. Well, you know, she was born in New York City, but my grandfather was a German. Mm -hmm merchant who got out before the before World War II and he moved his family to through Ellis Island the German immigrant German Jewish immigrant trip mm -hmm. they lived a couple years in New York City my mom was born in New York City at, at about one or two uh, they uh, other relatives had already started little depart dry goods businesses out here other relatives had already started dry goods business out here and so he had something, my grandfather had some, something to come do to work with other relatives, yeah. with the relatives of his wife, actually, who were German Jewish uh, haberdashers, you know, uh -huh. merchants. All right. And so my mom's been, and then my dad, she met, and so, my, but my mom came out here in the 20s. I was born in Alpine. Why are we here? We love it. What school did you go to in Alpine? Uh, you know, Alpine High School, class of 1973. Uh -huh. University of Texas at El Paso, 1980. Are you the first newspaper man in your family? Uh, I think so, actually. Mm -hmm. My father was a merchant, my mom a merchant, buyer. You know. Well, how'd you get to be a newspaper? Well, actually, let's, you just, know, let's have, announce this. Yeah. Just for, so you, uh, you run two papers. Yeah, the Big Men Seven Mark for the Presidio International and Presidio. And the Presidio one is bilingual. Totally bilingual. Well, mm -hmm. I can't say totally, but yeah, there's, there's, it's bilingual. Mm -hmm. And our daughter does the translating. So I get back to my kids. She's a tra she is a translator. English, Spanish, working on Italian. Wait, she, you send her the paper in, email. in Spain? Stories. Right. The, the uh, new right. Okay. You send her the stories in Spain, and she translates them and sends them back. Yeah. But Rosario presumably could do it. Yeah, but you know, we she Rosario does other things in production. Okay. And, and not to tra not translate. She translates spot spot yeah. translating. It should be noted, right, that you were the only papers. I mean, if you if you want to get a paper in Marfa, it's your paper. <laughs> I guess you could get a New York Times at where, like Thunderbird or something. I think the get-go has them on Sunday. Yeah. And I guess the, the Alpine paper is circulated here, the Fort Davis paper is circulated here as well. Well, not that much. I mean, no, the convenience store. Yeah, the convenience. But if someone's reading a paper in Marfa, it's like probably 95% chance it's yours. Yeah. 
and so, Presidio the International. So your your family are merchants. I know how you got here because but you know what I was doing. Fa- my my father and uncle they were in business together. My mother's brother it was a family business in Alpine, a dry goods store called Forsheimer's. Hello. Oh, hi. That's Ellie. Hi, Ellie. I'm Robert Halpern. Oh, so nice to meet you, Robert. Ellie is responsible for mid-century Marfa in those boots. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know, I found them. Mm-hmm. But, well, yeah, they're... they're, they're uh, Send us a news release when you pitch it open. I, I definitely will. I, I'm, I'm, like, busily, like, prying up tiles and, and yep. painting stuff. But, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to have a little soiree. I Good. want free booze. And, yeah. uh, and so, but I'm just, you know... Time. Well... Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I just I seriously like Cinderella crawl around on the floor scraping up stuff, and it's just cool, you know. Anyway, so nice to meet Likewise. you. Please don't be a stranger. Just I won't. Meet you, you know. Thanks. Uh, so anyway, how'd you get to be a paper man? Well, you know, my, or my journalist. father and my father and uncle let me work on the ad campaigns. Weekly, we the the paper. I mean, our business had. They were merchants, and they yeah, put out so ads in papers, and you worked on the the ads. Yeah, they they let me work on the ad each week, uh-huh. which was the Alpine Avalanche. They advertised in the Avalanche pretty much only. Excuse me. Um, and I guess that that was the that was the beginning. And then you know I, I wasn't good at math, and <laughs> as I developed, I wasn't good in, in math or the sciences, so I kind of drifted to the word English and. I guess with the background of helping with advertising, the, the print advertising, which was, they did radio too. I actually wrote radio copy because we advertised on KVLF, the, the only radio station in the area at the time, KVLF, right? Mm-hmm. AM 1240. And the FM came later, like in about, and then Market Public Radio in the 20. So did you start this paper? No, no, no. It's been in business. We, we started neither. The has <coughs> been in business om- over 100 years. And when you started working there, were you just... A, an employee. Rosati and I formed a corporation, and we bought the owners out. To, Did you meet Rosati then? We met in Alpine. Huh. She had come up from Presidio and was work, going to Saul Ross. And I, was, I took some basics at Saul Ross, too. I finished at UTEP, but took some basics at Saul Ross, and Rosadio was to come to Saul Ross. You two started the paper as a team? Or you didn't we start it. it, you bought it, yeah. but you kind of... Uh, so do you think it's changed a lot since, or has it, since you took it over? Is there a new personality to it? I think it's... I, I, I can't... How do I... It has changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's changed. It reflects, it reflects our love of the area. It mm. reflects our buy... It reflects the Norteño culture that we're a part of. Look at these... Uh, Journalists, these writers have come in. Tom Haynes came in. Uh, Emily, I guess, fellow journalists like what we're doing, and they get their some of them. It's also it's a happening town. It's a happening yeah. Luck of not, yeah, and maybe we had something to do with it in the eighties too. Every little piece put together a dynamic paper. Along comes a dynamic radio station. Judd ranching down, you know, ranching is the predicate for everything, mm-hmm. and then the transition into culture, not just art, but culture. Well, t- t- talk, culture about, town. talk about ranching, because everyone else has talked about the other stuff, but when you grew up, were you around ranching families? You grew up in Alpine, so you probably Sure, were close. M- many friends were ranchers. I mean, we were, you know, it, it's a, how funny, my, my parents, I mean, my grandfather was sort of a merchant class and didn't own land like the ranchers own land, so it was sort of a separate but equal type thing. Yeah. Uh, I like what when the, the ranchers came out here and settled the land, bef- I mean the natives were here first and the ranchers, English did their thing. And then people like my grandfather came out as the second wave of pioneers and became the, the merchant pioneers, I guess. There was the ranching pioneers and then the merchant pioneers starting these businesses and things. Is there still a ranching base to Marfa, do you think? I or? think so, yes, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. We have Two feed stores and a feed mill. You're right. Run, good point. Yeah. You know, uh, it's still sure. Mm-hmm. There's a ranching base to town, but there's also there's a military. Uh, well, maybe the military has kind of evolved into the border patrol, which is you know, it's a quasi. <laughs> That's so true. It has. It's you know the military's not here anymore. No. Although it did define the town. But they're almost in the same place too. Well, you're yeah. right. Yeah. You know, so it did define Marfa as in World War One, and it defined Marfa in World War Two. The base is decommissioned. Uh, the Air Force Base, too, don't forget. There was an Army Air Force Base out there. Yeah, but where, where the viewing station is. Where the viewing station is. Right. Well, you, what you said about the, the Border Patrol is really insightful because they're federally funded folks who, like, you know, have guns. You know, they're not even law enforcement, actually. Yeah. Texas, does, Texas 
hasn't given them police power. Well, I've wondered about this. Can they? So, if I'm going by them at 85 miles an hour, can they give me a ticket? They probably can. They can detain you <laughs> until someone else and call the deputies or the DPS, who then can give you a citation or arrest you mm-hmm. under their Texas. They don't have they don't have law enforcement powers here. The immigration, you know, immigration. Uh, I don't know. Is that meaningful or is that technical? I mean, if they can I mean, detain me, no. If they can detain me, though, isn't that law enforcement? Yeah, but you, you know, in the in in the scheme of in the hierarchy of law, yeah. you know, maybe you can you can get a good lawyer who can if right, right. Bond. Uh, well, do you have any memories? You know, I told you we had the four questions. Do you have any memories of uh, Judd? No, military. Oh, I mean, military. And I know you might you might not, but your family might. My father was in World War II. But he was stationed in Germany. I mean, he was in World War II in Germany. Did he sign up here in West Texas? No, he grew up in Upper State, New York. What about Judd? Uh, when we came to town, of course, he was here. So we got to know him. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any real specific story. I'll tell you a story that Allison Scott told me. Mm-hmm. I, this m- probably is before your time, but her dad was a journalist. Um, they owned the paper before us. Yeah, oh, really? it was a paper called... Uh, the Marfa Independent. Um, Around the Bend. Does that mean anything that to you? That was his column. Okay, so he wrote a column saying, um, uh, you know, driving down the highway, I saw these culverts being built, some construction site going up. And Is that right? Who knows what's going on? And he, apparently Judd came to the paper and said very nicely, very gentlemanly, uh, you know, actually, that's art. That's my art. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're putting up this. I've also heard them defined as antelope outhouses. <laughs> what was he like? Do you have any memories of uh, soft-spoken, huh. headstrong? I mean, he, you know, he had a he was he he was on a mission, <laughs> an art mission, the site-specific permanently installed mission, site-specific permanently installed, and so very headstrong, but in a in a quiet way. I never, it, 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 I think. I never saw him, you know, get angry. Although I've I've heard stories of yeah. him yelling at employees when he got, but in public or with me, we got along well. Uh, I knew it took me a while to learn what the art was, but I I, I knew they weren't culverts. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember any of these things going up, like you know the the cars in the Chamberlain Museum or the cul- and you, you know we got here just what? after. That, that that had already been established, you know. The, the 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 Chamberlains were here, and and of course the the, the, the gun sheds, mm-hmm. and what else? And then we watched him develop the the bank building, the one next to Maya's. Yeah, yeah. I, I still have yet to do that. And all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he. he just a funny kind of guy, kind did, of quirky. Did, did you think while he was here, while you were overlapping with him, that he was changing the personality of the town, or did you think well, it was just another artist here doing some weird stuff? Oh yeah, no, I thought you know buying the buildings, yeah, fixing them up, kind of showing this direction of. Did housing prices or anything go up? No, was... no, he was buying them quietly, and nothing was still going on. Uh huh. Oh, I think the next wave when Tim Crowley and. And the Daguerans and Woody Woody Ferris and some he's a dentist at Woody and Kate Ferris and oh, yeah. they started coming and then they primed the real estate pump. Hmm. Don was just buying these buildings and fixing them up and employing a lot of people. So he had a little economy at the time. Yeah. Rosadio uh, was an early administrator, God bless her. She had She worked for him? She had she had uh, Mariana's job. But when it was very small, when he was still alive, there's such a big difference. There's such a night and day between what Shinati was when Don was alive and what Shinati became after he died. When Don was here, he ran it, you know, kind of low budget. He was not, not, you know, just and uh, and of course it became a real corporate entity that it is now after Don died. Is that just the generally what happens when an artist dies? He gets more famous, or you was ask Mariana that? But I, I guess I did. I did ask that, and she just was very understated about it. Well, she, he funded it himself, mm-hmm. and so he was spending. He was buying ranches. I mean, so the Shinati Foundation is kind of rocking along. You got you had the, the the concrete pieces installed. You had the gun sheds, the mill aluminum pieces, and you had the Chamberlains. Mm-hmm. And then the Wesleys, you know, none of these others were here. They, they, he was started adding the the Kabakov, but he started with those three, and then he added, you know, the Flavin. He was funding it himself, you know, 
and he was buying ranches and you know making art and spending money and stuff like that. When he dies, for the Shinati Foundation to continue, it had to become sort of a corporate thing. They had to raise the money on their own. It had to, it had to have its own income after Don died, because yeah. it was no longer he no longer he died, oh. and there went the, <laughs> the there went juice. the income. Yeah, right. Huh. Well, so it became a different animal. And well, what year did, was that? They, oh, was that? He died in '94. Okay. We we were here. We came in '88, but it got established in '83 or '85. We got here in '88, so what we saw develop is the the Oldenburg was in, the Oldenburg was installed, of course. Then the Kabakov, the I'm oh, sorry, what's the Kabakov? It's the it's the school number six out there. Okay. The installation, the art installation oh, called yeah, School yeah. Number Six. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. And that, yeah. So it was it was developing while he was here, mm -hmm. of course. I ask people. Uh, you know the obvious question: What do you think of all the change here, or has there been much change? But you document it. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, every day. I mean, yeah. Well, you know what they tell what newspaper people are is the first draft of history. Mm -hmm. You know, so we get to do the first draft of history. Then the the magazine writers do a second draft. Then the book writers do a you know it keeps getting refined and focused or something. But we do the first take on history as it goes down. Well, uh, there's a quote. Uh, I'm sure you've heard many, many times that the history is written by the winners or by the victors, but I've always thought, no, history is written by the writers. If you really want to leave your mark, you know, just be, be the guy who's writing about it, and you'll have... Right. Uh, I guess that could mean like, the, the, it could mean that, you know, when, you know when, when the general, of course, also runs the country and yeah, well, runs the press. No, they, I, they, I, yeah, obviously, if, if, if everyone... So we've been pretty fair. I mean, with that other thing is, you're right, this... At least in our case, sort of a, a you know a nonpartisan look at the Marfa and the area from the '80s to now. From us, the uh, radio station will ultimately have our radio archives, but the, it's tended well, to be print. I like where this is going because heretofore it was only print, and uh, that's fine too. But this is good too. Would you vote for John F. Kennedy today, if you were on? Oh yes, I think so. <laughs> Uh, we were just talking about that, but um, sorry, I'm putting that book food back. And do, do you have to stay out of uh, comment range, out of all the politics you that know, are going for, on in town? As much for just living in the community, we usually don't make endorsements. Right. Don't favor one candidate over the other. It's a lot easier to meet everybody at the post office. Mm -hmm. We can present both sides. We usually do a candidate form every year. The way we run policy, we've kind of evolved into the politics of things. Our policy is to let each candidate give a seven or eight hundred word statement, unadulterated. We'll edit it for edit it for uh, you know spelling and accuracy, but just seven hundred and fifty it, words. It's a tiny town. You guys know everyone. Like I would say, in the last three or four days, I've seen you at three or four meetings with a bunch of people. Do you try to keep your yourself kind of circumspect in conversation and stuff? And if so, how many? How long can you do that before just like blowing off this, some steam? I'm, I'm candid about it. I, 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 I'm a Libra. I don't know if that's the part of my being a journalist, but I'm a Libra uh -huh. as a as I a, am too. As I don't know. And yeah. so I just I I kind of see both sides, uh -huh. right? If there's such a word, or many sides. I mean, I see, I see these neighbors, the the clinic thing. I see the the clinic thing. Yeah. And how this is going to affect these neighbors. But I also see the need for medical care in one of the least medically, you know, in one of the most medically needed counties in the United States. Yeah. Not just Texas, but, you know, underserved, I guess is the, the politically correct word, is we're one of the most underserved medical counties in the country. Mm -hmm. So I, you've got to balance. I, 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 we have the same thing happen in our neighborhood, Jason, is when AEP... Uh, tripled the size of the little substation and... and uh, we had no recourse. Huh. There, oh, oh, where the, do you I live? I live in South Sequoias. Wow, tell me about you know, yeah. I know. The, tell, tell me about that. For, I have a, why is that thing so big? And how could they just? Because uh, there's no regulation in Texas. There's no there's no environmental regulation. Okay, let's talk, we're talking about we're talking about the electrical transformer station. Yeah, the sub. It's called the Alameda substation. I was just driving by that yesterday. I had two thoughts. I thought this is huge, and I mean it's like the biggest thing for miles around. On the other hand, I thought to myself, Wow, what if some uh, 
like Chinati artists said that they did that thing. Everyone would be going there like marveling at it because it's, oh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and of course, uh, Rackstraw Downs has painted it. Yeah. He actually painted the small station. You know, uh -huh. they enlarged it over the last year, but Rackstraw has yeah. And then it was art. Then it's art when you paint it. It's right. Art. It's well, a blight in my community. It's a blight in my neighborhood. Can, can you hear it? For real. Does it buzz? No, it's actually no more. Yes, it buzzes on the on the other side of my house. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you you can hear it at night if you're listening. During the day, all the other noise. It's not that loud. And we and we knew that when we bought it. Uh -huh. What we didn't know was that it would triple in size, but it really hasn't. The the sound is not. Are the Salsipuelas residents worried about uh, EMRs and electromagnetic radiation? Sure they are. Uh -huh. And they all say, you know, no effect. There's no studies. Of course they say that. Of course they say that. Yeah. And now they're saying because it's like 40 feet higher. <laughs> of course, what they're all but what the whole point is that they're adding more electricity. Mm -hmm. They're bringing more electricity. They're, this is an upgrade. But it's not electricity for us. It's, it's electric electricity for Presidio. Presidio was at yeah. the tail end, and they've been having brownouts and blackouts for years. So mm -hmm. they they've have they're having to now what they are adding capacity mm -hmm. because what this line is going to do they're adding capacity. So if there is solar projects that come here, they will be able to put the electricity on, which still isn't ours. It will be if they if you make solar energy out here, yeah. we're going to use it. Yeah, it may be sold to San Antonio. But the actual, everyone knows. But the electrons are going to be made by mm -hmm. solar, and we get to use it. So, is this a good thing or a bad thing for Celsius weather? Yeah. Well, it could have been handled. It could. It's. It's. Is it? It's a bad thing for the neighborhood. Bad it's a thing good for thing the, for the area. And that's my Libra. It's okay. bad for the neighborhood, but it, it's it's the upgrade. We all use it electricity. You can recharge yeah. this batteries, electricity. The heater's going. Recharge this, computers, da da da. How much electricity they're using downstairs right now? Too much. The uh, thing is spinning, you know. Yeah. But the gas, right. too. The gas, too, right? So, uh, so, so someone put, right. Well, anyway, it, it's, it's, a huge, it's a huge project. I know some people have been selling their stuff. And I know that it's actually, if it wasn't uh, electricity, well, we'll finish off in just a sec because I see you're getting all these messages. But if it wasn't. I got 15 minutes. Okay. If it wasn't making. Uh, Electricity. If someone had just done that as you know their own backyard like little project, it would be amazing. I mean, it's just yeah. it looks like it's from Gotham City. It looks like it's out of the future or something like and that. It used to be it, it before when it was small, the poles were wood, and now they're these silver steel behemoths. And it was a third. They took the whole city block, and it used to be inside. They didn't need the whole city block. It was a. It was fenced in. The old subsection was like fenced in. Yeah. At about one third the use of the city block, and what they did is they filled it in with dirt and squared it out. And, uh. and you're right, Rack, I, I, you know when I was doing stories, I never got a hold of Rackstraw. He's got a painting of the old one. Oh, good. And, and I'm, I'm sure he sold it. You know, yeah. He's profited to the tune of hundred thousand <laughs> on this substation out here. Well, but he's a genius. Well, why do you suppose other people come here? I don't know. Be, I, it's a good place to live. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm still figuring out why I'm here. I, I'll tell you this. I like it. I have a lot more friends here. It's an easier way of life. But I didn't Isn't come it? here for that because I didn't know that until I'd been here for a while. So right. I don't know what the. So before Judd. Yeah. And before everybody else, it's the environment. It's beautiful. It's all virtually unadulterated still. Mm -hmm. You know, virtually clean air, good water. Yeah. Virtually no crime. Mm -hmm. What else you want? Virtually no crime. Virtually no crime. <laughs> uh, and, you know, where neighbors still look after their neighbors and their neighbors' kids. and Though what you're describing could as easily be a retirement home. But the truth is, most of the people we get here are younger. Thank goodness. It's, uh -huh. it's a repopulation. I'm, I'm pleased with what's happened over the... When, when Rosati and I came in 88, it's like, oh my God, what do we do? What do we decide to do? We're in a town that's dying. Uh -huh. Savings and loan had closed. A grocery store had closed. Why had they closed? In the, the economy's bad. When, when did the decline start? Or did well, it start after the World War Two? You know, the, the yeah, World War Two was the beginning, I guess, and then the drought of the fifties. The ranchers were decimated or hurt, <coughs> so they had to lay off people. And then when you lay off people, mm -hmm. a store what used to you know, if three dry goods stores supplied the town and they laid people off, only two stores you know supply the town now, or only one store. Mm -hmm. So as the town shrunk after the drought of the 50s, when that's pretty much the only economy, so went the town. 
So it was slowly declining by the 80s. There was no, what you, you gave a list. There was no pharmacy, no, what was it? Actually, there was a pharmacy. Oh, Cross, there was? Cross Pharmacy. Where was that? Uh, it's in, it's where stuff is. Oh. Actually, it was the whole building. It was the whole bottom floor. So Which is kind of amazing that there were, you know, <laughs> that the truck intake was so huge. But uh, so what did you say was left? You said there was something that had gone by the time well, they the savings and loan had closed. Savings and loan had gone. There was a dry cleaners at one time. Mm -hmm. There was a, there, the grocery store where it's another Judd building. Judd bought the building between Mariana's house. Mm -hmm. That was a Safeway. The old, the old, yeah, yeah. The, the California chain came all the way out here, the Safeway stores. It seems like these things are now intentionally left fallow. Like you could, with the crowd that's here now, you could open a pharmacy, you could open um, a dry cleaner, probably have, I mean, there's right, we're over laundromat right now, but it seems, yeah. I get the impression people want to keep the town somewhat I, I just austere. I, I agree, uh -huh. you know, I would, I would, in some respects, the town needs these things more than they need yeah. <laughs> some arts and crafts. Yeah, it's the arts you know, and No veterinarian, no drugstore. Mm -hmm. uh, a really good ABC pump is a great place where you can make something work, but it's not like having, yeah. uh, you know, you can't get everything. You can't build a house from it. Right. Yeah. But maybe that's okay too. <laughs> we just don't, the economy is still, I mean, even though there's been a renaissance, it still only supports a small, you know, all the spending at everybody's place. Still doesn't. No, yeah, there's still like economic laws. Like you can't do too much when you only have too few people. Whether that's good or bad, though, is you know that, that's just the eye of the beholder. So. And it's nationwide too, isn't it? I mean, you know, the big box concept and you know, rural towns that are suburbs of Lubbock. Yeah. The mom and pops go away because there's a super Walmart that can you can buy stuff for a third, or, you mm -hmm. know, two thirds. Of, so then it becomes incumbent on you to spend the extra money to shop locally. But I mean, I go out of town too. I, I buy as much as I can locally. My business relies on local support. I am cert I certainly reciprocate. Yeah. Every place I can, mm -hmm. even even my the tires I bought for Brit Webb over the years that I could get for. <laughs> I'll buy them here. It, it doesn't. It, it's not. You know. But you go out of town. I mean, look at look, Odessa and Midland has always attracted people from 200 miles away. Uh, let's finish on this. What's the, the future of the paper? Any, you got anything coming up? I know you just had a lot of people leave, uh, different reasons. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that in the history. Yeah, okay. we had some great people. Yeah. It's time to reinvent ourselves. I mean, when you're, when you're handed a situation like this, you, you, you move on. You, you mm -hmm. reinvent, not reinvent, but you move ahead. We've had great people in the past. Market is a cool town that attracts all sorts of creatively minded people, and we're we're a business that needs good writers and good graphics people. But you had this is the cool thing you have more ads. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's holding. I mean that, that that's what you want. So the future is, and we're transitioning to the web. Uh, Buck designed a really good website for us to transition into the digital age when the print is no more, and I, I foresee that coming in. 15 or 20 years or sooner some people say sooner but look at the post one, we, one of the re, one of our vehicles to distribute the paper is the post office and if they close mm. they, they're going to close Valentine probably Marfa's probably next 10 years from now ding, 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 yeah. you know maybe there'll be a regional center in Alpine or Presidio but I can mm. so and and by then people have always paid for media either in the Marfa Public Radio is supported by money. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsors. <right. laughs> a commercial radio station, KVLF and KALP, are supported by commercials, mm -hmm. newspapers, ads. Uh, you've always paid a dime. Or the internet needs to catch up with. The, 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 the internet, internet needs to catch still up. Still figuring itself out. Yeah. Well, listen, let's uh, close off here because we're being attacked by this. Okay. <laughs> uh, house dog. The, thank you for letting me do this. Oh, thank you for joining. I really, I, I hope it actually uh, kind of gets a chain reaction. We, well, let's just do what we can do a weekly blog. Yeah, I would love I'm, to do that. Let me add another element here. Take a picture of everybody. So when.